I'm Owen Bigline. This is the Inside Edge video blog. Okay, happy Saturday. Let's do one of my motivational, the proper mindset you need for success these days and these tough times. It's not easy making it these days. Uh, you got to stay positive, and, I, and that's what I'd like to do with, with some of these Saturday blogs here. So, give you a, a one here. I was reading some stuff on Twitter here. A guy tweeted out some stuff here, on, and I've covered a lot of these things in the past, but let's just go through them here. But it's uh, a blog on why. Uh, uh, most people uh, stay broke. And let's face it, most people do stay broke. Uh, most people in Canada and the United States are working paycheck to paycheck. They have very little savings. They have very little, if anything, in investments. They rent. Uh, or if they own, uh, and hopefully they do, almost half do, that is their biggest asset is their home. And that's why I've often said to you guys, that should be your, your first move financially. Buy your principal residence, because chances are that will be the largest asset. And in a lot of cases, it might be the only asset that a lot of Canadians and Americans have by the time they get into their retirement years. So here we go here. Number one, they buy things that don't make them money, for sure. They live, a lot of people live to spend. Uh, live way beyond their means instead of saving first uh, and spending uh, uh, second. I've always put aside 20, 25% of my income since I was a teenager, and I would put that money to work in a couple of areas. Real estate, bought my first property when I was 18 years old, still hold it today, and I've continued to buy more as we went along. And then for the last 26 years, I've been a stock investor. I bought my first stock, which was Pepsi, uh, about 26, 27 years ago, bought 15 shares, uh, own a lot more of that since. Uh, of Pepsi. It's one of the major holdings in my portfolio, but I put my money to work. Um, as I've said here before, look at every dollar you earn as a, as a soldier. And do you want your soldier sitting on the couch playing video games, smoking marijuana, or do you want your money out in the field, out in the trenches, uh, working and making money for you? And the two best ways to do that are real estate and equities, or perhaps start your own business or start an online business, put some money into that but put your money into areas that will make you more money and even better will make you money passively. And real estate and the stock market are one of the best ways to do that. You don't act, have to actively, at least not all that much, actively engage in making the money. You set it out there and let it work for you and bring that money in passively. Um, they fear losing money. Yeah, for sure. This one is huge. This one I've gone, how many blogs have I done on this? It's never the right time to buy. Never the right time. Can't buy that condo, can't buy that house, can't buy that town home. The market's in a bubble, don't you know? It's gonna crash. If I buy today, it, it's gonna, it could go down 10 or 15% in a couple of years. Yeah, it can. That's the way markets work, real estate or, or the stock market. They don't go up in a straight line. You're going to get pullbacks fairly regularly. You know, a 10% pullback in the stock markets a couple of times a year is very normal. Uh, in the real estate market, you know, in Vancouver here, you know, we're a bit of a different market. We're not, not unlike a lot of these really higher, highly de desirable cities. But even that said, we will get what I kind of call these run of the mill corrections in Vancouver. Uh, we should get one every three or four years of five to 10%, something maybe a little bit severe, more severe, 10 or 15% every decade or so. They will happen, but you can't have a fear of losing money. When you buy a home, it should be a long-term commitment. How many times have I talked about this? You have to be able to buy and hold the home for at least eight to 10 years or have a backup plan. If you have to move, you can rent the property out, keep it until the market recovers, which it always does. But they fear losing money in the stock market or in real estate. You have to get comfortable with the fact that you could pull the trigger on a 20 shares of Johnson & Johnson today and two weeks later it goes down 10% or a year from now it's worth 15% less than what you paid. You have nothing to worry about there. You're still collecting the dividends, the company will recover, the stock price will go up. Because remember, in the, real estate is just like the stock market. In the short term, it, you know, it's, a, it, it's on opinion. In the long term, uh, you know, the fundamentals will carry it through. And if you own the right stuff, high quality Vancouver real estate and high quality equities or just buy the indexes, you're gonna do fantastic. But it's not a straight line up. You have to get used to that. They, they trade time for money. This goes back to what I said, getting your money working for you passively. If you read my book, Along for the Ride, 
That's why I call it Along for the Ride and why I have that L1011 on the cover. You put your money to work and then you just set it and forget it. Let, it, let the investments do all the heavy lifting. You buy 100 shares of McDonald's. Let McDonald's and their fantastic CEO and their franchise model and all the real estate they own and getting a cut of every Big Mac and every fry, just let that do its thing. They'll pay you that nice fat quarterly dividend, which they keep growing every, every year, and just set it and forget it. Uh, you're not having to work for it. Now, I've got, I've told you guys, most successful people, most multimillionaires have multiple income streams, and most of those income streams are passive. You only can have one real active income stream, or maybe two. For me, I only have one, and that's my work as a top Vancouver realtor. But my other income streams are my rental properties, my rent checks coming in, my investment portfolio. Hey, I've got book sales. I've got income coming in from my YouTube channel. Get your money working for you, especially getting it for you working passively. There's only so many working hours in the day and you will never work your way to retirement. You have to invest your way to retirement. They don't invest in themselves done lots of blogs on this. I'm always reading, always learning. That's what I love about the career of real estate. It never ends. You're always learning new things. You've always got new situations you've never seen before. I try and read 15, 20 books a year. You guys should too. Enjoy the process. Enjoy the journey of it, of learning new things and trying to get a little bit better every year. Never stop learning. I never stop learning about my exercise regimen, my diet, uh, my sleep regimen. I'm always trying to optimize myself in, in different ways. And it's fun. You enjoy it because as you see the progress and as you start moving up the ladder, it becomes more motivation to keep keep going. It's just getting started. And getting that rock moving is a lot of times the, the toughest part of it. But invest in yourself. I always go back to that 100, 150 hours. You have to at least take that on to manage your retirement funds. It's not that difficult. 100 to 150 hours will give you everything you need to know to manage yourself instead of paying a overpriced money manager to do it. If you want to still do that, that's fine. But I think after you learn the 100 hours, you'll realize this isn't that tough. I'm going to index invest. I'm going to put together a model portfolio of low cost ETFs through Vanguard or iShares. And I'm going to learn the basics of buying individual stocks. And you're off to the races. They care about uh, other people's opinions. This one's a little bit of a sleeper and it, it's so true. You know, so many people never want to get out of their comfort zone. And if you want to achieve you know, it, the sky is the limit, as I've often said here. If your goal is to achieve a $1 million stock portfolio, great. For other people, it might be 10 million or 20 million. The sky is the limit. You set it to wherever you want. But I can tell you, if you want to really push it to get a $10 million retirement portfolio or buy a portfolio of five or six homes um, or become a high level CEO or business owner, you're going to have to get uh, comfortable with being uncomfortable and not having everyone always agree with you. And you, you. It's just the way life is. Look at my video blog here. Now, Google, I guess, last year removed the thumbs down buttons. You can't give me a thumbs down anymore. I guess those guys have all left. But I never posted a video in the first eight or nine years where I didn't get thumbs down. Of course you're going to. I know that people aren't going to agree with everything I have to say on this blog, and I'm totally fine with that. Um, there's certain people that are going to connect with this kind of tough love strategy I try and give you guys, and others might think I'm a little bit too abrasive, too harsh, mean, I've had some people say. Well, if that's what you think, I'm totally fine with that. I personally don't think I'm like that. I do this blog because I enjoy doing it. Sure, I get a lot of business from this blog, but I do it because I like doing it and I'm trying to pay it forward and help you guys. Um, I've already been there and done that, made it. Uh, I don't need to do this for, for, you know, for my business at all, but I, I like doing it. I like to try and help people, learn from some of the things that I've done over the years, parlay that to you so that you can become successful. That's why I'm in this business, what gets me up. You know, there's nothing like the feeling of, winning a bidding war for a client uh, and getting them that first condo 
and, and the satisfaction and the thanks that I get for doing a good job for them. That's what keeps me going in this. But at the same time, I know in my blog here, I'm always going to get people that are going to disagree with what I have to say. Geez, if I ever post, started posting videos and everyone agreed 100%, I know I'd be doing something wrong then for sure. But you have to get used to it. It's life. It's what makes the world go round. If everyone agreed with what I have to say, it'd be pretty boring. Uh, final one that this guy threw in here is they hang around losers. Now that's pretty harsh, but listen, what do they say? That if you take your five friends that you hang out with, your five closest friends, add up their annual income and divide it by five, that's probably where your income is going to sit. And you know, there's something true to that. Try it. Take your five friends, get their income, divide it by five and see where you sit in that. It's probably going to be very close. So you, you do become who you associate with. If you're going to associate with complainers and people that are pessimistic and the housing market's going to crash and woe is me, we can't make it. It's much more difficult now and I don't have a hope. And then you're probably going to end up like that as well. So, you know, try and break out of that mold. Uh, you know, stay positive, stay optimistic. As I've often said here on this blog, you know, we've got so many a huge advantage if you're watching this and you live in Canada, the United States, or maybe some European cities. You know, people would give their right arm to be able to become Canadian or an American. We're given every opportunity here to succeed. And, uh, you know, take advantage of, of that. Not everyone has that. And, but, you know, money isn't everything. As if you've read my book, I talk about how I'm a minimalist and material things don't really mean that much to me. The money I earn is fantastic, but it's never been meant as a means to buy, you know, cars and clothes and all that stuff. I have a nice lifestyle, make no bones about it. I drive a nice car and I've got a nice home. But that's not the what gets me up. I mean, money for me, it, what it does is it buys you time. It buys you freedom. If I want to hop a flight tomorrow and go to Hawaii for 10 days, I can do that. It's not going to make any difference to me financially. It's the freedom it gives you. If you want to sleep in or spend a couple weeks working on your training or learning some new routines or reading a couple of books or binge watching some Netflix, I can do that. That's what having income and passive income flows that you don't have to work for will do for you. It'll buy you that freedom. And what I've always, always tried to put forward here, especially on my Saturday blogs, is you guys can get there too. It's just getting that ball rolling. You're not going to notice much in the first 10 years. It takes time and that's what trips up most people. They don't see immediate results and they quit. You just stay the program. And if you do what I have been advocating here, pay yourself first, buy your, your principal residence, max out your TFS and, R and RSP into low cost index funds or good quality S&P 500 companies. Let them do the heavy lifting for you. After 10 or 15 years, it'll all start to come into focus for you. You'll start at that time, you'll have 10 or 15 or $20,000 coming in in dividend payments. You might have a rental property with you know, rental uh, income coming in from your tenant and you're paying down that mortgage. By the time you get into your late 40s or 50s, it's like a, you know, a, a, a rock has been taken, a boulder has been taken off your shoulders financially. You know, you're much less stress because that's what, you know, most people are stressed out about is financial stress. Stay the program, but you have to have, be optimistic. You have to be positive. Stick and, and, so, and, 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 and be around other people that are also optimistic, positive, and want to do things with their lives. I'm Owen Big Len. As always, thanks for watching. I'll see you next week.